Welcome to Right and Wrongs here at Agile Solicitors. The easy guide to the legal issues many people may have to deal with in their lives. I'm Keith Phillips and joining me to discuss child brain injuries caused at birth is Solicitor Maria Rapanas. Hi Keith, it's good to be here. Now we're here to discuss birth injuries which affect children. Now specifically cerebral palsy, herbs palsy and hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, HID. Maria, there are around 1,700 new cases of cerebral palsy diagnosed in children here in the UK. Now, it's a brain injury which affects movement and muscle control and is life-limiting. Is cerebral palsy caused by maternity care negligence? There are a number of causes of cerebral palsy and one of those causes can be complications that arise either in the antenatal period or in the immediate neonatal period, in the early neonatal period that can then cause um, lifelong injuries that result from negligent treatment. The cause that often leads to medical negligence claims that we see is often due to deprivation of oxygen in the antenatal period or the early neonatal period. Um, And if a baby does suffer a lack of oxygen in that period, what typically happens is that those babies require resuscitation. Um, They also often require a period of time in a special care baby unit where sometimes they are called to... um, reduce the impact of the brain injury and sometimes those babies go on to develop seizures or, or potentially issues with various organs. And babies born prematurely are at the higher risk of having cerebral palsy. That's absolutely right. In addition to babies where um, their mothers have suffered an infection during the pregnancy or during the actual labour itself, it can also arise where there's been a bleed on the baby's brain and also in a situation where there is a genetic factor at play, whether there is a genetic issue such as a a mutation of a gene which affects the baby's um, development of their brain. Maria, how would a parent even suspect that medical negligence was the cause of their child's cerebral palsy? I think first of all, It's whether they have a sense that something went wrong during the actual management of the labour and delivery, if that's that's what the issue is in terms of whether they feel that there's been inadequate monitoring or a delay in, for example, a cesarean section being performed or where, for example, they presented with reduced fetal movements and they felt that there were issues that weren't acted, acted upon quickly enough Um, But today, many parents have the benefit of really quite excellent diagnostic tools such as MRI scans, which which can actually tell the imaging itself can tell you what the cause of the injury is, Um, but also other tools such as blood tests as well. So all of those things, all all parents are equipped with that knowledge um, after a period of time in hospital if a baby does suffer from cerebral palsy. And in that scenario, what I would always Uh, do is I would strongly urge any family who does have concerns that there have been issues in connection with the management of labour and delivery or or other issues that have caused cerebral palsy, then I'd recommend that they speak to a specialist solicitor. Maria, another brain injury that children can be diagnosed with is Herb's palsy. That's also connected to medical negligence. That can be connected to medical negligence, yes. So herbs palsy is a nerve injury which affects the, or typically affects the shoulders, hands and arms. It can have quite devastating lifelong effects and early diagnosis of that's imperative. And and sometimes the clients that we see um, and act for, um, they need quite significant treatment, surgery and and therapies for for, for a very long time or or certainly lifelong. In cases of herbs palsy, where would medical negligence be a causing factor? So there can be issues in cases like that where there are failures to carry out certain manoeuvres during the delivery of a baby. 
particularly if it's known that the baby's big or they're stuck. Also, if excessive force is used um, during the delivery itself and also where there are issues in connection with failures to carry out caesarean sections where, where there are obvious signs that one is required. Now, another condition that we mentioned earlier also affecting newborn children is hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, HIE. How common is that? I, th- I think HIE affects about a thousand, one in a thousand babies um, in the UK. So HIE is caused by a lack of oxygen or blood flow to the baby's brain. And that can either be during birth um, and can sometimes be as a result of medical negligence. Some children, though, who were diagnosed with HIE, they do fully recover. I think some do. Um, but some su- suffer from really quite significant neurological impairment um, and have quite significant developmental delays and learning disabilities. And sadly, there are some babies that pass away as a result of severe HIE. Um, the prognosis often depends upon the period of time that there's been oxygen deprivation so often the longer period of time the more severe the HIE and also it also is dependent upon the treatment that's given um, in the early neonatal period so sort of aggressive early treatments absolutely true crucial for a better outcome and minimizing brain damage. If a child has been diagnosed with HIE, HIE I mean the condition is not always down to medical negligence but it can be. That, that that's absolutely right so it isn't always down to negligence but it can also even with really fantastic medical care be due to a severe infection preeclampsia or eclampsia or even a premature birth but we see many cases or HIE cases where there has been negligent care where there have been issues in relation to the management of the labour and delivery of baby which have contributed or caused HIE. And Maria, what cases have you successfully represented clients where negligence has been a factor in causing brain injuries in children? I've dealt with a number of cases of that nature and a number of cases where bad babies have sadly suffered from HIE. Um, And in a number of those cases, various factors have been at play, such as failures to carry out appropriate tests or investigations during pregnancy, sometimes misinterpretation of scans, um, failures to act upon uh, reduced fetal movements, um, where there have been failures relating to maternal blood pressure, um, also where there have been failures to escalate issues to more senior clinicians, and failures to interpret the CTG trace, which monitors the mother's and baby's heart rate during the pregnancy. So all of those are, well, those are some of the factors that can can be at play in those types of cases. If there are parents listening who have a child who, who suffered a brain injury during birth, will they automatically be told by the hospital or the NHS trust that negligence was the cause? Well, they certainly should be. Um, Under the duty of candour, NHS trusts have a duty to explain to families, to patients, where things have gone wrong and where errors have been made uh, and certainly where an injury has been suffered as a result of that. I think sadly in cases involving birth injuries such as uh, cerebral palsy, uh, for example, what we do frequently see is NHS trusts are more reluctant to make admissions of liability in those cases. And I think due to the significant value of some of those cases, they're often more strongly defended. That doesn't mean to say that the duty of candour um, isn't adhered to in the sense that um, open and honest admissions are made. Um, But my experience is they're probably more limited in those cases. So there won't automatically be an investigation carried out about why a child has been born with a brain injury? I think certainly in cases where a baby has suffered HIE, what would typically happen is there would be a debriefing session with the family. So they would have questions answered by the individuals involved in in, in the mother's care. Um, So with, say, the midwives and the obstetricians, and it would be an opportunity for them to understand 
the treatment that was carried out, the decision-making processes at the time. And sometimes what flows from that is that more formal investigations are subsequently carried out. Some of those are internal investigations within NHS Trust, but also some that are carried out by independent bodies um, to understand what went wrong and potential recommendations, with a, often with a view to improving patient safety. If parents have a child who's suffered a brain injury, when would when might they want to take legal advice? I would always say to any parents that if they have concerns or queries about any issues arising out of theirs or their children's medical treatment, then they should seek advice from specialist solicitors at the earliest opportunity and when they feel able to do so. Um, it will give them an opportunity to see theirs or their children's medical records and to, uh, to get a real understanding of the events that took place because sometimes individuals might forget some things that have happened um, and there might be some issues or some things that have taken place that they weren't necessarily fully aware of. So when we investigate cases, we, we obtain our clients' medical records and then we instruct relevant medical experts in the relevant fields um, to tell us really what went wrong and why. So if there were errors in the management um, of medical treatment, whether it's a labour or delivery, we, we instruct our medical experts to tell us what those potential failures are. And then we will also instruct experts to tell us whether injuries are, are avoidable and what the actual cause of those injuries are. For these families, bringing a successful medical negligence claim can be life-changing. I think that's absolutely right, Keith. Um, if a successful um, claim is brought, for example, in a cerebral palsy case, um, compensation that's obtained in cases like that is often significant and what we would bring claims for would relate to things such as care, therapies, accommodation, rehabilitation uh, and the purpose of that often is to make the child's life uh, and to enable them to lead as independent life as they possibly can um, despite their injuries. Well you touched upon it but it, it's a transformational change in circumstances for the whole family, not just for the child involved. That's absolutely right. I think cases like these have a profound impact on, on improving the family's lives through access to those treatments and therapies. And, you know, for parents, respite care that they wouldn't necessarily have been able to access without the funds to do so. Is there a successful case where you have been able to transform a family's life? Yeah, I've acted for many clients where... The, where the impact of the compensation and the settlement has had a really sort of life-changing impact on on our individual client, but also on the wider family. So a case I dealt with relatively recently was one in which the family sadly were living in really wholly unsuitable accommodation. And my client was completely wheelchair dependent with very significant cognitive impairment and other siblings in the household. Parents had absolutely no access to support um, as they didn't have any family living nearby. And the impact of the actual claim itself has meant that they've been able to live in suitable single storey accommodation, which has meant that they've been able to employ a carer, which has given them respite care as well as care to enable them to continue to work, which they weren't able to do due to the impact of their child's injuries. The impact is really quite extraordinary on family life. One of the important things to pick up on here, though, is it is really important for people to take specialist legal advice in these cases. I, th I, th I think that's absolutely right. Um, I would always recommend any uh, individuals who think they might have a complaint in relation to a birth injury to go to a specialist solicitor who can easily identify the issues in the case and has significant experience in dealing with similar cases. Maria, thank you very much. Thank you, Keith. Medical negligence solicitor Maria Rapanos, who specialises in birth injury claims here at Hudgel Solicitors. Thanks for listening to Writing Wrongs. And if you need further information regarding any medical negligence issue, head to our website, hudgelsolicitors.com. Co.uk.